Hey, hello. Today, I'll give you 30 reasons why you need to get up and walk, and walk in the outdoors. I'm Andrea Furlan. I am a physician and a scientist in Toronto, Canada. And I help people with chronic pain to live the best life that they can live. So come for a walk with me. Did you know that just by being exposed to green spaces like this, you have a lot of health benefits? Now imagine when you combine this with walking, walking outdoors has a lot more benefits than just walking a treadmill inside of your house. So I'll show you what are those benefits today. The first and most important benefit is that you're going to live longer. Do you want to live longer and better? So walking and walking outdoors will give you that. Walking outdoors will reduce your, your diastolic blood pressure and will reduce your heart rate because your heart will be more efficient and more conditioned and stronger. So there is a lot of research showing that if you reduce the diastolic blood pressure and increase the efficiency of your heart, you're going to live longer because you're going to prevent cardiovascular disease like myocardial infarct, stroke, circulatory problems, you're going to declog those arteries that go to your legs, to the heart. So that's a very good benefit. And you may think that walking is good only for your muscles and your heart, but did you know that it's also good for your brain? Yes, because when you are walking, you are releasing neurotransmitters. And did you know that they will regulate the other neurotransmitters and hormones. So another benefit of walking outdoors is that you will reduce the cortisol levels. If you have never heard about cortisol, this is a hormone that is released by our body and regulates sugar, it regulates how you absorb sugar, but it's mainly the stress hormone. It's released when you are in stress. So of course, instead of taking a stress pill, an anxiety pill, this will do the same thing because it will reduce your cortisol levels. And talking about neurotransmitters released by the brain, another one that your body will release when you're walking is dopamine. You probably heard that people who are addicted to things, addicted to medications or addicted to um, gambling, addicted to many other things, they release, they do this because the brain releases dopamine. So you can do this naturally by being exposed to nature, green spaces, and walking in nature like this. And another neurotransmitter that is released when you're walking outdoors is endorphin. You might remember this from my other video, the brain's inner pharmacy, yes. So if you remember that video, I talk about what can you do to release endorphins? Endorphins is your natural painkiller. That is the medication, it's more potent than morphine and your brain releases that. So why not to take natural methods to release endorphins? And talking about pain and endorphins and painkillers, another benefit is because you're walking, you will be lubricating your joints. Remember, motion is lotion. So if you walk, you're moving your spine, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your feet, also, you know, your neck and your arms. You're basically moving your whole body. You're lubricating a lot of joints in your body and motion is lotion because our joints, the cartilage in our body is the nutrition comes from the lubrication. So the more you walk, the more you exercise, the more you use those joints, the more lubricated they will be, they will regenerate easier, and you'll be preventing arthritis and arthritis-related conditions. And talking about arthritis, one of the conditions that a lot of people have is spinal stenosis, because that's a narrowing of the spinal canal. I have another video that I show exercises for spinal stenosis, you can watch there. But the person that has the spinal stenosis, they have what we call neurogenic claudication, which means they have to stop walking, 
because they start having pain. So one of the things they need to do is not to stop walking, but they need to practice more walking. So they need to go slowly. We recommend them to start on a treadmill at home, but then graduate and then you can walk outdoors and observe the beautiful nature. Look at this, the fall is starting here in Canada and the leaves are changing colors. In Toronto, they are still green, but we can see some of the orange colors popping up. So another benefit of walking is, and walking outdoors or walking anywhere is that it will improve your posture. This is a problem for people who have spinal stenosis because they tend to walk like crunch like this and um, because they alleviate the pain a little bit. But if you want to improve your posture in general, you want to strengthen the muscles of your back, just by walking, you will be noticing that you have to walk straight and uh, you can go up and down hills and uh, exercising the muscles of your back, the muscles that promote your posture. So this is a good exercise if you want to improve your posture. So another thing that is related to posture is balance and coordination. If you want to improve your balance, like right now I'm walking here, going to this stream of water there, you do need to practice your balance. Of course, you need to uh, handle, you know, the stones and the rocks. I love getting here because I get close to the water. Can you hear the water? Let me see if you can hear the water here. And I'm going to show you this. So improve your balance. When you walk outdoors, you're probably going to find terrain that is not even. Things like this one here. Uh, can you hear and can you see the water? Oh, I love this. Yes, yeah, so then this means that you will be practicing your balance. So I need to be careful here that I will not fall in the water. <laughs> Uh, but this is good because if you don't challenge yourself, you're not going to improve your balance, your coordination. And I know a lot of people are worried because they have a tendency for falls, especially if they have osteoporosis, they may fall and break a bone. So practicing, improving your balance is great, especially if you walk in a terrain like this, that is uneven, not easy to walk but practice and if you don't want to go by yourself because you are unsure if you fall what's going to happen find a friend and then that would be another benefit so another benefit of walking just walking in general and physical activity in general is reducing the risk of cancer yes there is research to show that if you walk if you exercise regularly then you'll be reducing your chance of cancer the most common cancers. So there is research that suggests that exercise impacts the tumor biology via direct changes in the circulating proteins, RNA molecules, and metabolites. I, I read some papers and some research. The mechanisms are not fully understood why this happens, but nonetheless, the studies, they show that there is a strong evidence that people who practice regular exercise have a lower risk of developing seven common cancers. And here's the list. Colon cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer, endometrium cancer, bladder cancer, stomach and esophageal adenocarcinoma. And the risk is about 10 to 20% reduced. Now, if the person has already been diagnosed with cancer, the, the regular physical activity reduces the mortality of colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer in approximately 30%. So this is really significant. The next benefit is fatigue. Did you know that walking reduces your fatigue because it increases your energy level? So fatigue, this is another benefit of walking because when you walk regularly, you are conditioning your mitochondria, you're conditioning your blood cells that will carry oxygen. And so this is great for people who have fatigue, chronic fatigue, people who have long COVID symptoms, people who have fibromyalgia, they say that they have that constant fatigue. So get up start walking even if you start just a few minutes and increase gradually 
and enjoy the outdoors, the fresh air, mm. fresh air to your lungs and watch the nature, watch the birds, the trees, the plants growing. And this is not only good for your body, but it's also good for your spirit. Now, the next one is very interesting because the next one is about your blood sugars. Did you know that if you eat a meal that has carbohydrates, sugars, if you, after that meal, if you go for a walk, you will be improving the use of those sugars that you ate. So you, you will have a less peak of sugars in your blood, especially if you go for a walk after you have that meal. So this is good because then it improves your utilization of those maybe excess carbohydrates or sugars that you just ate. I love stopping by this place and there is always someone walking by and I know my neighbors so they say hi and they walk with their dogs. So this is a lovely place for me to come and, uh, and take my daily walk, which takes me to the next point. Talking about blood sugars, if you have family history of diabetes, like I have, my father has diabetes. So I have a higher chance of developing diabetes. So if there is anything I can do is walking daily. We know that there is research to back up this. So there is research that shows that if you do walks of approximately two miles per hour, you're reducing your risk of diabetes at about 15%. A fast paced walk, which would be a faster one of about two to four miles per hour, you would be reducing the risk of diabetes at about 24%. Now, an even quicker pace, if you walk quicker, I will not do this because I'm recording and walking at the same time, would reduce your risk of diabetes at 39%. So this is really important reducing your chance of developing diabetes at about 39%, no pill can do that. And just diet alone doesn't do that. So you do need to combine diet with exercises. Now, if you are a person that has a tendency to increasing your cholesterol, which is mostly genetic and hereditary, not so much related to diet, but if your cholesterol is always on the higher side, and you don't want to take medications or if you take medications you have side effects to those medications like muscle pain is very common with uh, cholesterol lowering pills then walking is another thing that you need to do get up and walk try to do this every day because there is research that shows if you do this every day your bad cholesterol will get lower now this one is so important dementia did you know that walking reduces our risk of developing cognitive impairment, memory problems, and dementia, like Alzheimer's? When you walk, you are sending messages to your brain to produce substances. And one of the substances is called nerve growth factor, NGF, which promotes the increase, the growth of neurons in your brain. So isn't that amazing? This is good not only for dementia, but also for degenerative neurological disorders. There are many studies demonstrating this, many research conducted doing this. But one of the studies, they looked at the amount of steps that a person walks regularly, and they showed that just under 10,000 steps in a, when they go for a walk, is able to reduce the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. And then other studies show that, well, 10,000 steps might be too much. What about a little bit less? And even a little bit less, which is around 4,000 to 5,000 steps, was able also to increase the thickness of the brain cortex in the medial uh, temporal lobes, which is the area related to memory. So if you want to prevent memory problems, cognitive problems, dementia, Alzheimer's, go for a walk, regular walks, at least 4,000 steps, 5,000. If you can go up to 10,000 steps, that would be great. Now, let's not forget another organ, very important when we are walking. This is the lung, the lungs. We have two lungs. So the lungs also can have a lot of benefits when you walk because you will be exercising the lungs. 
For people who have asthma, please talk to your doctor to see if you need to take special medications before you exercise. And for people who have COPD, also it's important that you check with your doctor to see if you don't need oxygen. But if you're healthy and you want to condition your lungs, then exercise, go for a walk, breathe air, breathe oxygen, because you will be exercising your lung muscles. You will be improving the blood circulation around your lungs. You will be improving the efficiency of your bronchi and uh, the exchange of oxygen by mo carbon monoxide depends on the efficiency of these cells in your lungs. So what about if you train them? Uh, God forbid one day you get a viral infection, a pneumonia, a bacterial infection in your lungs and you need these cells you need this oxygen exchange to be very efficient, so you better be prepared for those things when they happen, right? When you are resting, just sitting or resting at home or just sitting outside, outdoors, it's beneficial, but you're only getting about 12 liters of air per minute. Now, when you exercise, you get about 100 liters of air air per minute. So you see how this is important because your lungs also need exercise and walking and brisk walking is amazing. And another benefit related to your lungs is if you smoke, then it can help you to quit smoking. Yes, walking can help you quit smoking because a lot of people smoke just for the habit of getting outside, getting outside of the home, getting outside of the office, and then relaxing for a few minutes. And you can do this by just going for a walk, go around the block, go in a ravine, go in a place that you can just relax for two or three minutes. That will replace a cigarette if you are using cigarettes just to treat your anxiety and your stress levels. And talking about stress and stress levels, another benefit of walking is you will sleep better. You will have a better quality of sleep at night if you walk during the day. And I like to say exposure to sunlight on your face, on your eyes, will also help you to produce melatonin, which is another neurotransmitter produced by our brain that tells us when we need to sleep. When it's dark outside, your body starts producing melatonin. And then, um, you will sleep better. So if you want to get a good night of sleep, go for a walk during the day, especially outdoors. And I have another video that I talk about sleep hygiene, that uh, there are many things that you can do also to improve your quality of sleep, efficiency of your sleep, not just walking. So let's talk about another one, now related to muscles. Well, I have another video that I talked about sarcopenia. And sarcopenia is loss of muscle as we age. It's a natural process. It happens to everyone as we age, starts at age 40, and then it starts increasing and you lose muscle. But there are things that you can do to prevent that, to make the muscle loss less um, intense and prevent that you have sarcopenia because sarcopenia is related to a lot of health problems. So if you wanna reduce sarcopenia, increase your muscles, go for a walk, and this is related to another benefit, maintaining your weight. We know that obesity has become a major problem of the century. More and more people, especially in North America, are becoming overweight, obese, morbidly obese. So one good way to reduce the chances of obesity, to maintain your weight, is regular physical activity and going for walks, it's good for that. It will help you to maintain your weight and sometimes it helps you to lose weight. It's not easy to lose weight just by walking because you don't spend a lot of calories when you are walking, but it helps you with the blood sugar control. It helps you to spend those extra calories that you ate in your last meal. And there is research to back up that. A recent study published with women uh, that they walked uh, 60 minutes per day, three days a week for 12 weeks. That helped them to lose the 
belly fat and improve their blood sugar controls. And when you're still talking about stress and stress levels, just walking outdoors, like looking at this beautiful nature and observing, you know, the wind and hearing the sounds of the leaves, this is relaxing. And also it disconnects you from the stress of life, it takes you out of your house, disconnects you from the TV, social media, and bad news, sometimes at work, the stress at work, stress at home. So get out and walk. If you don't have nature close to where you live, like this beautiful ravine that I have, at least go for a block, a walk around the block, find a park maybe close to where you live, a street that has some planted trees, and go because you need to disconnect. We all need to disconnect. It's so important. So then you will be relaxing your mind, listen to music, put a podcast, try not to listen to the news, try to disconnect from social media, and maybe you will be able to disconnect your mind. And talking about disconnecting, there is a lot of evidence that walking, regular physical activity, and contact with nature improves our mood, improves, boosts our serotonin production, which is another neurotransmitter produced in the brain, produces, helps our gut bacteria to produce uh, the neurotransmitters like serotonin as well. It helps our constipation, which is related to a lot of digestive problems. But mood depression is so common these days. And we know that people who have chronic pain, they also have higher chances, higher um, incidence of depression symptoms. And another benefit related to mood and happiness is connections, social connections. Like right now I'm walking by myself, but I usually come here either with my husband or my daughter or friends who come to visit. And this helps you because then you disconnect, you can walk and talk, you can solve problems, you can discuss solutions, you can know your neighbors better, you can make more friends. And um, that is so important because social connections is related to our health. There is a lot of evidence showing that people who are isolated, they don't talk to anyone, they don't socialize, they have a lower quality of life and more diseases, more health issues. So walking is good for that too. So the other thing is, if you need creativity, if you, if you are a creative person, a writer, um, you write music or you write books or you write texts or you're writing a thesis or you're writing or you are creating something and you need creativity, you need some imagination, go for a walk. Because when you go, you oxygenate your brain, you will be stimulating those cells of creativity, you will get ideas, and it will boost your imagination. So that's another very good uh, side effect of walking outdoors. And coming back to pain, I love recommending walk to my patients who have myofascial pain syndrome because they have trigger points in the muscles and I tell them you do need to pump oxygen to those muscles. And when you walk, especially if you do brisk walking or even running, you will be pumping a lot of oxygen to those muscles and reducing the amount of trigger points immensely. So get out there if you have myofascial trigger points. And if you are lucky enough to be exposed to the sun, not in a cold day like this, uh, it's a little cold so I can't expose my skin, but if you can, you'll be producing vitamin D and vitamin D has a lot of benefits. Watch my other video about vitamin D here and uh, learn about this very important hormone. Our body makes our own vitamin D when we are exposed to the sun. Of course, if you cannot be exposed to the sun for some reasons, then you need to supplement your vitamin D with pills, but why not to get it naturally by sun exposure? And talking about the sun, the sun entering your eyes stimulates melatonin, which is good for sleep. We already talked about that. But not only that, 
when you are outdoors, you are stimulating your eyes. You're stimulating your eyes to look at a distance because when you live in a closed environment and then you're always like straining your eyes, looking at a computer or looking at things close to you, our eyes need to see distances and this is good to reduce the strain in our eyes. Another benefit is for people who suffer from anxiety, panic attacks, or psychiatric conditions that provoke anxiety, fears, walking outdoors relax their mind, relax their breathing. They can do breathing exercises, relaxation exercises. They can do mindful walking. They can do meditation mindfulness, practice all of this instead of doing these things inside of your house, locked in a bedroom, get out and walk and do those exercises in nature. And talking about uh, exercises and stress, another benefit of walking outdoors is that you stimulate your parasympathetic nerve system. You remember, I talk about this a lot, the parasympathetic nerve system is the rest and digest system, which is the opposite of the sympathetic nerve system, which is the stress response, the fight or flight response. So they oppose each other. And in people who have chronic pain, usually the response that they have when they have pain is to activate the sympathetic nerve system. So the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system, they oppose each other. And in people who have pain, especially chronic pain, they usually have a hyperdrive of the sympathetic nerve system. So they need to learn how to activate the parasympathetic nerve system. And one good thing to do this is by getting in touch with nature, going for a walk, for a brisk walk or for a slow walk, because you cannot be stressed in this environment. There are no bears here no animals. <laughs> I think if I see a bear here, I will be very stressed. But, or a coyote. Sometimes they say there are coyotes here. Okay, no coyotes today. So, uh, only squirrels. Yeah. So you'll be activating your parasympathetic nerve system, which is the rest and digest and relax part of your autonomous nerve system. So we are getting to the end of my list of 30 things that you, 30 things that are beneficial when you walk outdoors. One thing that people ask me is about headaches. People who have tendency to have headaches, tension headaches, migraines, they say that sometimes if they walk, they get a headache attack. Well, let me tell you one thing. That might be because you're doing the wrong way. Pay attention to your hydration. If you are dehydrated, then you may have a headache, but not because of the exercise. It's more because of the dehydration. Also, think about if you're not overheated. Uh, overheating, like by clothes or doing your exercises in the heat of the day, may precipitate a headache. So try to do your exercises, your walking in a cool time of the day. The other thing is, if you're trying to do your exercises in higher altitudes, where there is less oxygen, that may also precipitate a headache. And the other reason might be because you're out of shape. So you need to condition your body, you need to condition your muscles and your nerves and your nerve system to be uh, on shape again. And then you can do your exercises and it will not trigger a headache. I have other videos about headaches that you can watch on my channel. I talk about migraines. I have another video about tension headache, medication overuse headache, so you can watch them there. And the last but not the least is your bones. We didn't talk about the bones in this video yet. So walking is excellent for your bone health to prevent osteoporosis, but also to keep the calcium in your bones. There is research showing that if you walk, if you exercise, you will be improving your bone health, your bone mineral density. Just one study, I'll just mention one for you, for you to know. A study published in 2022 showed that uh, the amount of brisk walking was significantly correlated to the bone mineral density. Taking 30 minutes of brisk walking per day, three or more times per week, is recommended to prevent bone loss in premenopausal women. So, your whole body benefits when you walk outdoors. Your whole body 
from the brain to the tip of your toes, your muscles, your heart, your lungs, your bones, your mind. So there is no excuse for you not to walk outdoors. Get a pedometer, you know, or get your, um, your cell phone. A lot of smartphones these days, they um, measure how many steps you give when you walk. I'll just count. Now remember, this video is not medical advice. I'm not here to give you medical advice. Please talk to your doctor. If you are not used to walk, if you want to start walking to see if your health condition is okay, but it should be okay for everyone. And if there is an emergency, please call an ambulance or go to the nearest emergency department. This video is for educational purposes only. And don't forget to press that share button and share this video with your friends, your family, to stimulate them to walk outdoors today. Goodbye.